Now, at Pearly Gates Academy, the students are not allowed to skip classes. They must get to exit classes before sitting for the external exams. Hmm. Also, in naming ternary compounds, which are compounds with at least three elements, we must start from the cation followed by the hydrogen, that is if there is, before naming the radicals present, indicating the Roman numeral standing for the oxidation number of the element that is combined with oxygen to form the radical. Now, let's take a look at some examples. KNO3 becomes potassium and the radicals given potassium trioxonitrate 5. NAH SO4, which is a combination of sodium, hydrogen, and a radical, becomes sodium hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6. Now, however, there is an exception to this rule. When the radical is preceded by only hydrogen, then it is an acid. We just name the radical and add the acid to it. Now, H2SO4, which is a combination of hydrogen and a radical, would become tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. That's so simple, right? So what have we learned? We have learned that ternary compounds are inorganic compounds containing at least three elements. And to name them, you must start from the cations, followed by the hydrogen, if there is. Therefore, naming radicals present indicating the Roman numeral standing for the oxidation number of the element that is combined with oxygen to form the radical. Let us look at some examples. Now, examples are KNO3, potassium trioxonitrate 5, Na2SO4, sodium tetraoxosulfate 6, NaHSO4, sodium hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6, KHSO4, potassium hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6. Now also, when the radical is preceded by only hydrogen, then it is an acid. We just name the radical and add acid to it. Examples are HNO3, trioxonitrate 5 acid, H2SO4, tetraoxosulfate 6 acid, H3PO4, tetraoxophosphate 5 acid. I know that was insightful because it was insightful for me and I hope you learned something. I hope I'll see you in the next class. Bye for now.